In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about medicine work experience in just a few minutes. This is gonna be a brand new series that you can watch the full one of here that will add videos as we go along. We're gonna teach you all the four elements of work experience and the fundamentals of what you need to know and how you're going to go about arranging the best kind of work experience, whether you are applying this year or next year. So we're gonna do a video for each one of those, but we're gonna follow the same format every time, which is why you should do it, how much of it you should do, how often you should do it, how you go about organizing it and the resources that you can use to help you do so, and the biggest action piece when you are undertaking that particular part of work experience that you should make sure you do. So today we're gonna to be covering shadowing, arguably the most important one. And like I say, it'll be a quick fire round of why, how, what, etc. So shadowing is the bit where you go into hospital and you're a fly on the wall and you are following a doctor around seeing what they do. It might be a hospital, it might be a GP practice. But the reason that you must do this as part of your medical application is that it shows you what the career is like. It gives you insight into the career as they call it. Because unless you do that, there is no other way. And realistically, there is no way of you knowing what being a doctor is going to be like until you're there but this is the closest thing that you can do to get an idea of what it's going to be like. It's really important to understand this now rather than in five, six years time when you get to becoming a doctor and then realize that it's not what you thought it might be. Good to get that experience now so that you can get an understanding. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is how much you need to do. Now, I would recommend 80 hours, so that's two weeks full time. And it's nice to have, if you can, a mix of one week in GP and one week in hospital. Now, it's not easy to arrange and we'll talk about that, but you really can take whatever you can get. But if you can do that in an ideal world, that would be perfect. Or if you want to do both in hospital, maybe one in surgery and one in medicine to just get a different perspective of different things. Then we're gonna look at how often you should do this. When it comes to the other elements, like your volunteering, your paid work, your extracurriculars, that we'll talk about in the full series in the other videos here, those are all about little and often. Whereas here, really what we're talking about is maybe a one-off or a two-off event with your shadowing. So really, these are the kind of things that you do want and then it's almost ticked. Now, if you can get more, it's great. This is something that we want to have done and squared off before we go on to the more intense part of the med school application. Now, the biggest difficulty people have with shadowing work experience is the actual getting it. And that is the hardest part. And I will tell you that it will be very difficult, even now outside of COVID times, the the persistence that you must show to get it is quite large and you might need to do a dozen, several dozen attempts before you even get a bite. So the key is to persist and this is partly why they want to see that you've done this because they want to see that you've got the grit, the determination, the persistence to keep going until you find something that is worthwhile and a really good placement. Now, the most effective way is not to send out an email blast to loads of people because obviously emails get ignored and you can think of your email inbox, how many times you've just seen an email asking you to do something and you've just not paid it any attention. Now, the best way is either in person if you can, I mean, that is a bit of a stretch to go to a local hospital, but or calling. Now, what you do when you call is you go to the switchboard, you find the number on Google for your local hospital, and obviously you probably have several hospitals nearby, so you try as many as you can until you get a uh, place confirmed. But what you do is you call the switchboard and you say, could I speak to, and you pick a department of medicine. So it, may, it might be pediatrics, it might be orthopedics, cardiology, any of them, and they'll all be listed on the hospital's website. And you ask to speak to the medical secretaries. Now they will be able to direct you and help you with that. Now some will be polite, some will be rude, but those are the people that you need to speak to. That's why I think going in person sometimes, it's very hard to say no to somebody. It's harder on the phone, it's even harder in person. So usually if you go and show a bit of charm and just introduce yourself and explain what you try to do, they're much more likely and inclined to help you than if you just send an email blast to everybody. Now it's similar with the GP practices and the beauty of this is that Typically, unless you're living in a really rural area, you should have several practices within a 10 minute walk. So you want to go into all of those either in person or again on the phone and do exactly the same. Just explain what you're doing, you're applying to medicine and you just need some help. And could they please help you arrange a placement for a week, a couple of weeks, really whatever you can get. Now, a really good resource for this is either Google for your big hospitals, but also a website called NHS Choices allows you to search and can put in your postcode and find all the GP practices within a certain radius and you can set that radius and it will give you the list of everyone that you can try. 
really fantastic resource. Now we're gonna look at the action that you need to take while you're on that placement. And for shadowing, by far the most important thing is to keep a log. Now, medical schools really won't care that much about the prestige of the hospital you went to, who you shadowed, all of that stuff is nice, but almost irrelevant. The most important thing is, as we said at the start, the purpose is to gain insights into medical school or into what life as a doctor is like. So you need to demonstrate that you've understood those things. You need to show if you've seen a really important case or something that really struck you, what were the details? What was the situation? What disease or illness was that patient suffering from? And then what did you learn? What skill did you observe in the doctor? What trait? Uh, what impact did that have? How did you learn about it? What reflection do you have on it? These are all really important things to take away. And when you're on a placement, like I was when I did my very first shadowing and I watched these operations and I saw hernia operations and all sorts of weird and wonderful operations, I thought that I would never forget it. But lo and behold, a few weeks later, I couldn't remember the name of the type of hernia that it was, what the procedure was that they did. These are all the details that you have to write down so that when you come to writing your personal statement and when you come to interviewing, that you know everything about it so that when you can tell the story and they say, okay, so what did that patient suffer from? Or what operation did you see? You know those details and you can talk intelligently about those things. So that is a whistle-stop tour of everything you need to know about shadowing work experience. For all the other elements of work experience, I've made a playlist that will be adding videos to here. Otherwise, if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help to arrange the best kind of work experience and also maximize your performance in all areas of the med school application, those five key areas that you need to smash, check out this video here where we can tell you exactly how we can help you get into your first choice medical school at the first attempt.